I want you to prepare yourself for a great word from the Lord just for you. Please like and share. I know you're going to enjoy this message. Prepare yourself. Get your paper and pen if you believe you need it. Let's get ready to go into the message. Do you have Joshua chapter 12? If not, it'll be on the screen in a minute. I'll be reading from the New International Version. So it may read a little bit differently. It may be a little, it's going to be a little lengthy in our reading, but I promise it. All of the details are necessary. Beginning at verse 7, chapter 12, it says like this. Here is a list. Somebody shout a list. Here is a list of the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered. Somebody shout conquered. This is a list that they conquered. On the west side of the Jordan, west side. From Baal, Gad in the valley of the Lebanon, of Lebanon to Mount Halak, which rises towards Seir. Joshua gave their lands as an inheritance to the tribe of Israel, according to the tribal divisions. The lands included the hill country, the western foothills, the Araba, the mountain slopes, the wilderness, and the Negev. These were the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites. Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites. That's a lot of ites. These were the kings. Here it is. Verse 9. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, somebody shout, one. The king of Jarmoth. One, the king of Lachish, one, the king of Eglon, one, the king of Gezar, one, somebody shout one, the king of Debir, one, the king of Gedar, one, the king of Harma, one, and yes, I'm going through every single name. I'm sorry it's getting on your nerves if it is, but I'm going to go through every single name. The king of Arad, one, the king of Libna, one, the king of Adullam, one, the king of Mechada, one, the king of Bethel, one, somebody shout one. The king of Tapua won. The king of Hefer won. The, the king of Aphek won. The king of Lesharon won. The king of Madan won. Somebody shout won. The king of Hazar won. The king of Shimron, Miron won. The king of Akshaf won. The king of Tanakh won. The king of Megiddo won. The king of Kadesh. Somebody shout won. Are you tired yet? You tired yet? The king of Jekium in Carmel won. The king of Dor in Napheth Dor won. The king of Gohim Gilgal won. The king of Terzah, somebody shout won. I took a lot, family. All of these were 31 kings. You would think that the writer would just say 31 kings. Why go down to list every single king? And not only did he list every single king, but he lists the king and says, one. Father, speak to our hearts with this word. You are clearly saying something, and we want to hear you. Those that are ready for the word, somebody clap your hands on your way to your seat and shout hallelujah. And all of these were 31 kings. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, the word for your life today is you've got to handle it one fight at a time. Look at another neighbor and say, hey, neighbor, the word you need to hear today is you need to handle it one fight at a time. One fight at a time. I want to read a quote for you that I came across that I found very, very interesting. It said, actually a few quotes. This quote said, the man who moves a mountain begins by carrying away small stones. He chips away 
at the big mountain by dissecting it, breaking it down in small stones. Here's another, here's another quote that I came across. Martin Luther King Jr. said this. He says, you don't have to see the whole staircase to know where you're going. You just need to worry about the steps. Here's another one. Great things are not always done by impulse, but by a series of small, intentional steps. I think this is important for all of us because many of us in our lives are trying to achieve big dreams, trying to possess big promises, trying to achieve and manifest big ideas and big goals, but we neglect the small details and the small moves and the small steps it takes to achieve those things. There is a status that I came across saying that uh, a man could eat an elephant, and the way he can do it is not all at one time, but in small pieces. Okay, has anybody ever had a whole, somebody gave you a whole cake at a birthday dinner or a wedding party? That cake could have been huge and large, but guess how that cake was removed? Guess how that cake was consumed? It was done by one slice at a time. It was done by one bite at a time. And many of us, our frustrations in our lives is we're wanting the whole big dream to be manifested in a moment when the reality is you can't put all of that in one moment. You have to dissect it. You have to break it down. Even your body can't consume food all at the same time. It has to be broken down into pieces and then it, it is consumed and stripped of its nutrients and broken down so that your body can receive the strength and the minerals and the, uh, and the needs and the nutrients that you have. But it's done piece by piece. It's done little by little. It's done once time. I remember growing up and having to take and go to grocery shopping and having to take groceries from in the car to inside the house. You know what I used to do to avoid the many trips? I don't know if any of you have done the same thing, but I used to try to put all of the bags, as many as I could in one hand, to limit the trips. And sometimes I was good because of the amount of bags that I had. Other times I smashed bread and other times the eggs was messed up and sometimes I just dropped the bags. Not because I'm weak. I ain't weak now. But I didn't use wisdom in transitioning such a big package from one place to the other. And many of us have to learn how to trust God with our big ideas. Yes, you have the habit of doing things on your own. Yes, you have the habit of, of handling and solving problems and, and matriculating and maneuvering through different visions and business ventures. But the reality is some stuff God wants to give you is too big to handle and take it all at one time. Guess why? Because not all of us are strong enough to handle how big what God is going to give us. Not all of us are mature enough to handle how big what God is going to give us. Not all of us are are keen enough, are focused enough, are submitted enough to handle everything God wants to give us. And so God has to put us through processes, has to put us through pain and, and position us with certain people that we don't like and some people and situations that make us uh, feel hard and overwhelmed and stressed. And for many of us now, that's where some of us are in the season where we're stressed and overwhelmed. We got all of these bills, all of this 
debt and all of this pressure and all of this obligation and all of this pain and all of these negative news and all of this to look forward in the future. Your family's dependent on you. Your people are dependent on you. You're dependent on you. And you have all of this overwhelming pressure on your life and you're trying to handle all of them at the same time. And God has wanted to remind you today, don't do it all at the same time. Handle it one fight at a time. We'll be honest, some of us are so overwhelmed, we've stopped fighting at all. It's because of the fear of all that is against us. We've ran out of strength. We've ran out of ideas. We've ran out of resources because we have not mastered how to deal with what God has set before us. But good news is, there is a biblical portrait. There is a solution to handling our God-given dreams, our God-given promises, our God-given aspirations. And that lesson meets us in Joshua chapter 12. Where we see a record, a list of kings that Joshua and the children of Israel had to fight through to possess. Wait a minute. If it's mine, why do I have to fight for it? If it's promised to me, why do I have to fight for it? Can I give you something that may get on your nerves? Not everything God gives you is something that you just have to show up into. Some stuff you got to fight for. Some stuff you got to be in place to receive. Some stuff you got to be in place to hear and listen and see. But according to today's text, some stuff you have got to fight for. Some stuff, sometimes I've got to fight for my peace. Sometimes I got to fight for my family. Sometimes I got to fight for my sanity. Sometimes I got to fight for my job, fight for my marriage, fight for my children, fight for my life because some stuff isn't given to me just because I am who I am. Some stuff can't just be given. I have to take it by force. This is a promise that has been in place for years. After coming out of captivity, after being bound in slavery, after seeing God open the Red Sea, after seeing God provide and do miracles and wonders, why now you don't want to do a miracle and just end my enemies? Some of us have a why now moment in our life. God, I've seen you heal this before. Why do I have to work now? I've seen you provide before. Before, Why do I have to put all of this effort and time now? You are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. You are the light in the darkness. But guess what? God isn't going to do everything for us. Woo! I don't know we don't like that. Some of our relationship with God is based on God always accommodating for us and our needs. And he will meet your needs in the ways that he chooses. And sometimes your needs are met because he provides it and lays it at your feet. But sometimes your needs are met because you got to go out and fight for it. So I want to speak to the frustrations that you've had in your life all 2024 you've had some ups and downs it, it seems like I, some of us have had to have fight after fight after i finish this fight i got another fight after i finish the fight at work i gotta have a fight at home after i fi have a fight at home with my spouse i gotta have a fight with my children after i fight with my children i gotta fight with my finances after i have a fight with my finances i have a fight with the government with the nation with my community i'm fighting just to be alive fighting just to be who i am fighting to be a man fighting to be a woman fighting to be a leader fighting to be a, a preacher fighting to be a musician fighting to be a creative fight in all areas of my life I've had to fight. I remember the movie said all of my life I've had to Anybody ever felt like that? I don't have no time to rest because I'm always fighting. 
I don't have no time for vacation because I'm always fighting. I don't have no time for peace and quiet. Anybody have been fighting so much that you just want to have just a little bit of peace? Just God, you ain't got to give me much. Just give me a little bit of peace, a little bit of quiet time, please. No, I, I want to be able to turn off my phone and go to sleep and not worry about all the messages that's going to bug me when I open it. I want to be able to go on vacation and not have to worry about the pressures of people around me. I want to be able to go home and just chill and just relax and enjoy what I've worked so hard to earn. Feels like a fight all the time. God wants to remind us today that though you have so many fights around you, the secret is handling it one fight at a time. Somebody declare that you got to do it one fight at a time. One at a time. So I hear you, family. That sounds cute, Leon. I can't just ignore important and significant things these are real battles these are real fights i can't just silence and act like none of this stuff exists how am i supposed to do one at a time how am i supposed to pick what battle is most important how am i supposed to move beyond knowing that if i put my attention here that's me neglecting this there if i put my attention on my my marriage it may put a, a, a neglect in another area of my life i'm not asking you to ignore i'm asking you to use the secret strategy for us in knowing what fight to fight is first of all talking with God. I don't claim to know all of the answers of how to live your life and how to pick your battles. But one thing I do know is today's example reveals to us that Joshua had so many fights to go through Yet, talking with God gave him insight on where to go first, what to deal with first, what to handle first. And this is the first point that I want to help you memorize and apply to your life. What fight do I fight first? How do I narrow down my decisions? How do I narrow down which giant deserves to be slayed first? What problem needs to be handled first? What situation needs to be addressed first? Because our life needs to be a life of victory, not a life of exhaustion. It needs to be a life of, of happiness and, and joy and strength that God gives us. If you spend all your time, all your life fighting, how are you going to live the abundant life that God has for us? It starts with, number one, fighting what you have permission to fight. Ooh, that's kind of good, Leon. That's kind of good. Let's see. Joshua chapter 1, before any of these 31 fights that Joshua has, God talks to Joshua and says these words. Look at what verse 1 says. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Oh, I want to teach on that. I don't have time. Therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all of the people of the land which I am giving you. Wait. We're talking about handling one fight at a time. Before the fight takes place, any of the fights, we, we saw it's 31. God tells Joshua I'm going to give it to you before you fight. Wait, that tells me that what I'm stepping into in my future should be based on what God gives me permission to do. Here it is for you and I. 
Some of us are fighting things and losing them because we haven't talked to God about how to deal with it. We haven't been given God permission to handle certain battles. And as a result, you're losing, you're bleeding, you're wounded, you're wasting time, you're spending effort all because you're fighting battles God didn't even call you to fight. You're fighting battles where God did not even give you the, the, the possession of it because as a result, you want to fight to gain authority. And if you're not gaining authority, that means either you are overwhelmed by what's fighting you and you didn't get permission to fight it at all. Could it be, church, could it be family that we are fighting battles meant for other people? That are, We don't have the strength to handle certain battles in our lives. Some battles are not for you to fight. Wait a minute. Isn't there a scripture? I don't know. Uh, y'all may read your Bible more than me, but isn't there a scripture that says this battle is not yours? It's the, that means some stuff we don't fight. Some stuff God fights for you. And a good indicator of deciding which fight I need to fight, you need to figure out, is this a God problem? Or a me problem. God gives Joshua permission. He gives him authority. He gives him a guarantee of success before he goes. But he also gives him, not only with per permission, he gives him parameters. He didn't say, I'm going to give you all of the earth and the, all of the land is yours. Look at what the scripture says. Verse, ple verse 3. Every place that the sole of your feet will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. Here it is. From the wilderness... And this Lebanon, as far as the great river of Euphra Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your territory. So there are certain battles that we should fight that God gives us permission to take over. Ooh, I might be messing up. If you have your own household, I'm probably not qualified to say this. I'm not married. And you trying to fight battles in somebody else's household. If you don't see a solution in their house because of you trying to fight their battles, ask yourself, did God give me permission to be in their be business? Did God give me government? Did God give me permission? Did God give me authority to fight battles in somebody else's house? In most situations, we try to insert ourselves into other people's battles that have nothing to do. Okay, y'all don't like that. God gives us insight to fight battles. We have permission to fight. Here's another detail that I think is good for your consideration. Before every fight, according to the scripture, not only did God talk to Joshua, but Joshua talked to God. There are instances, if you read from chapters 1 through about chapter 11, there are instances where God said, you do this, 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 and this. And then there are other instances where Joshua was like, all right, talk to me, say something, let me know what I need to do. Matter of fact, let me prove it to you. Joshua 4 and 1, I want you to read it for yourself. It says, and you, you should have Joshua, you, do we still have our regular Bibles in church today? Is that? Okay, let me leave you alone, that's meddling, all right, all right. Chapter 4 and 1, it says, and it came to pass... When all the people that completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua saying, take for yourself. God is talking with Joshua and Joshua is listening and talking to God. Chapter 5, verse 2, look at what the Bible says. 
And at that time, the Lord said to Joshua, let's go to chapter 6, verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, come on, chapter 8, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Joshua, chapter 10, verse 8. Look at what it says. And the Lord said to Joshua, chapter 11, verse 6. But the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. For, for to, but, but the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid because of them. For tomorrow about this time, somebody shout this time. I will deliver all of them to you. God is talking to Joshua, and Joshua is listening and talking to God. And so before he engages in battle, he's getting insight, permission, authority from God. I did all of that to tell you that for before every battle you face, no matter if it's a big battle, a small battle, a family battle, a financial battle, you need to be talking to God. You need to be listening to God. What is God saying about how to engage? What is God giving me about how to move and how to, how to engage how to interact with my enemy how am I supposed to go in this battle because when you talk to God God won't just give you instructions but he'll give you inspiration God will tell you be not afraid don't be be courageous be strong be in good courage because I am with you some of us the fights induce passion emotion and we allow the emotion to cause us to become impulsive. Moving before we should move. Acting before we should act. But the strategy, family, to conquer all that God wants you to conquer, you need to have more permission than passion. Not only should you fight what you have permission to fight, but you need to fight what you're in position to fight. In chapters 3 and 4, what we find is that before they began battling, possessing these lands, Joshua, rather, and his leadership, they are on one side of the Jordan River, and they have to cross it to begin the battles that they are supposed to possess, that they are supposed to conquer, the land that they're supposed to possess. And so, to possess certain things, I gotta be in certain positions. Some of us aren't getting what God has for us, not because the promise is voided, but because we're not in position. Stop getting mad at God for not giving you what you're not in position to receive. Ooh, am I getting on your nerves? I'm not trying to. I'm trying to help you to stop getting mad at God over stuff that he's like, I'm waiting on you. And you waiting on God. And God is like, you're supposed to be obedient. You're supposed to stand in a, a certain place. You're supposed to be in a certain position. You're supposed to serve in a certain capacity. The blessing is for you. I promise you. I'm a promise maker. I'm a promise keeper. But you got to be a promise follower and get in position. Nudge your neighbor and say, you got to get in position. You got to get in position. Somebody said, that's good stuff. I received that. Come on got to get in position. you got to get in position. Some blessings aren't going to just lay on you and just bow before you. Some blessings come by proximity and positioning. I went through studying the strategies and trying to figure out if I could find what specific things that Joshua and the children of Israel did to position themselves for victory. And a few of the things that I learned, I don't have time to give everything, but a few of the things that I learned was that one position is at God's ear. Put your ear towards God's words because his insights will give you direction. But another strategy that allowed them to be in position was that they were keen and aware of their enemy enough to know that some of these are on mountains. 
some of the territory is in valleys. Some of the territory is on dry land. Some of the territory is in high land, midland, rocky land. And they had enough sense because of being attuned to God and uh, tactician wisdom. What they had the ability to do was position themselves for victory. So sometimes in order to get victory after consulting with God, they would make ambushes at night. And some victories, they would make preparations around them. They would make preparations in the camp, preparations around the camp. Some battles, they fought by sending a few. Some battles, they fought by sending a few. Uh, by sending their whole army. And what that tells us is that there is a strategy to help us position ourselves to receive what God has for us. Look at your name and say, you got to get in position. You got to get in position. Not every battle you fight, though it may use the same weapons, will be won the same way. We learned last week, which is what inspired this pastor gave us a battle plan of one of the incidents one of the battles that god gave them direction to position themselves a victory to position themselves last week we learned that they had to uh go and walk around the, the 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 walls of jericho and then they had to do it for several days several times and by doing that it positioned them for victory that's one battle but other battles they went in through infiltration by other battles they went in by surprise what am I telling you there are some battles in your life where though you're going to consult with God God is going to give you wisdom on how to strategize for victory for each individual battle you don't solve family problems always the same way you solve money problems you don't solve money problems the same way you always solve a uh, people problem uh, personal problems so God wants us to know that some fights we win because we are in position to win them. And then finally, family, if you want to win all that God has for you, you can't just fight what you have permission to fight and what you're in position to fight. But you have to fight what you are, what you have the perpetuation to fight. That speaks to a perseverance. That speaks to a perpetual effort. You would think that, that because the Lord is on our side, we would just fight whatever fight he throws before us. But the reality is sometimes we fought and got wounded. We fought and got exhausted. We fought and lost. We fought and did things that caused us to be stagnant in possession what God wants us to have. But God is saying, as you engage the battles of your life, you have to keep going forward. You have to keep going forward. It's going to get hard, but keep going forward. You may have to take a few scars, a few bumps, a few hits, a few upsets, but look at your neighbor and say, you got to keep on going. It may upset you. Your family may be your enemy, but you got to keep going. Friends may be your enemy, but you got to keep going. People may be against you. Things may be against you. Lack may be against you. Time may be against you. Energy may not be there. Resources may not be there, but you got to keep on going because what God has for you requires you to keep on going and you know what happens when you keep going you begin to build momentum and as you build momentum the stronger you get the more unstoppable you become the 
stronger your faith is. The, the scripture tells us that as Joshua began to win battle at the battle, word began to spread so much so that the land that they were going to possess began to have fear in their hearts, began to have fear in their soul and began to expect to be uh, slain. They began to expect a, a overtaking from Joshua and the children of Israel. And God wants to remind you and I today that as you keep moving, that as you keep going, that as you keep pushing, God is going to give you divine momentum to shove uh, shove in the way and move out the way. The things that are holding you down, the things that are stopping you, the things that are blocking you. So I don't care how many battles you have. As you begin to face them one at a time with God's permission, with divine positioning, your job is to keep on going. As a man, as a husband, as a father, as a person, as a wife, as a mother, as a leader, as a son, as a daughter, we all have different, unique obstacles before us. But don't kill yourself while your enemy's trying to kill you. Don't, 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 don't be in cahoots. Don't be in collaboration with your enemy that's already trying to kill you by overexerting yourself in battles that you were not meant to fight or fighting them before it's time. But, uh, put yourself in position by consulting with God concerning what should I handle now? You can't run a mile without taking that first step. You can't build a house all at once. You have to do it one brick at a time. You can't build wealth overnight unless you, I guess, win the lottery or something like that. But at least the lottery take one ticket. <laughs> it's one. It's one. David only needed one stone. The woman with the issue of blood only needed one touch. Moses lifted up his rod before the, before the Red Sea one time. Jesus only had to die Oh, my God. And all God is trying to tell you today is don't worry about the many. Just worry about the one. Don't worry about the, the quantity. Just worry about what is set before you because what is set before you, God has equipped you to handle just the one. And what will happen, family, is if you just focus on the one, God is preparing the strength you need for the next. Ah, if you just focus on the one issue, if you just focus on the one problem, if you just focus on the one giant, if you just focus on the one circumstance, the one trial that you are called to, to, to focus on, God will give you victory over it while preparing your next victory over the next. And what I like, and I'm going to close right here and tell you that if you could just focus the one, you've just initiated your winning season. Because with that, what God God is saying is, as I handle one by one, I'm going to accumulate victories. I'm going to accumulate divine momentum. I'm going to accumulate what God has for me to step into my winning season. But you got to do it. can have many resources to handle the one fight but focus on one problem at a time one are, are you hearing my heart one not many but one <laughs>
Before we go, I want to give you an opportunity, one, to give your heart to God. It is vital, it's important, and I believe this word has taught you and has reached your heart. Simply say this prayer, Father, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died and rose again for my salvation. And according to the scripture, when you say it in sincerity and believe it, you are saved. But then I want to encourage you to become a member of North Houston Church so that you can be encouraged, instructed, lifted, and there will be fellowship. You can do it in person or online. You belong here.